Keep in mind guys that the presentation, the table, and the setup is not the important thing. It is what is inside of this video that's gonna make this video stand out from others. So stick around guys. All right guys, we are back. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys a little information on the boxes that I've talked about last week. Uh, we've been through the 10, the 22, the 45, and the 60 degree bends. And uh, here's the 10. We're gonna start out with this one first. Now listen, this table has been in many videos and it is not the best table. It's got a little hump in it. It is what it is. It will serve the purpose. Now, we're gonna do a lot of talking. Uh, if you don't wanna hear it, that's fine. You can go down into the description and there will be timestamps. Now, what I wanna show you guys is we've been a four inch offset, so we know that this four inch box is four inches, four by four square. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the distance you got here and I wanna kinda of try to make you understand uh, and talk about uh, why you would use different kinds of bends, the 10 degree versus, you know, a 60 degree bend. So first things I want to do is get out of the way is talk about, we, we've mentioned this before on the other videos. You see the importance of the bends. Now I'm not going to go heavy into code or anything, but you know, the more bends that you put in a pipe, the harder it is to pull wire through it. Now I have Sometimes I get a little carried away because I like the way that the bends look. So I'm like, you know what? I want to see these nice looking bends. I want to see these three point saddles. I want to see these four point saddles, so on and so forth. And then by the end of the day, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, there's too many bends and the, it's hard as heck to get any kind of um, wire through it. So you need to always be very conscious of what you're doing and how it's gonna be in the end because when you get done with your pipe bend you're like man that is a nice looking pipe rack or uh you know this one single bend is, you know from one from point a to point b looks beautiful because i have you know an offset box offset plus then i have you know uh a three-point saddle or you know i have a 90 and then it's kicked so every time that you bend a piece of conduit it adds the degrees to it so you got to keep in mind you know 360 degrees is the magic number you don't want to go over per code me personally now this is just me personally all right i like to go 270 maximum that's just me you can do whatever you guys feel that you want to do because like i said the more bends that you put in here obviously the worse it's going to be pulling the wire uh after I go 270, I always stick a box or a pull and C or whatever I'm doing, whatever fits that run. Uh, usually a box, sometimes an LB, it just depends, okay? Because like I said, if you're pulling the wire through these, now this bend ain't gonna be nothing because it's only 10 degrees, but if you've got a lot of these bends in a pipe, you know, it's gonna be pretty rough. You gotta imagine your fish tape going through here too because, you know, if you've got a bend like a 60 degree, right? Or the hiking, hing, de fing, de gurgen. The Viking one I bent, um, you know, if you try to pull a fish tape through here, and then on the other end you got a 90, my gosh, you're gonna be really, 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 really in trouble. I mean, you, it'll go probably, but it's gonna be pretty rough. So keep that in mind. All right, so keep up with your pipe bends, how many degrees you've already bent, you know, because even at a box offset, right? You're, you're going 10 degrees. So by the time that you're done with a box offset, you already got 20 degrees in there. That's the way it is. Um, so keep that in mind, guys. Uh, I'm not gonna really go heavily, like I said, into code. There's a lot of things I could really just keep on going about because I could talk forever about electrical stuff. So let's talk about this right here and let's talk about the why and how you would, I guess, think about this. now. Let's say this is your box or your obstruction. Let's just forget this box. Let's just say this is your obstruction that you gotta get over, all right? And your conduit, right? You know, it stops. Let me keep it in frame here. About right here, all right? So you gotta know, you gotta measure, all right? You got about 20 inches right there. So what would be your ultimate bend, right? Well, if you put this here, you see your bend right here is going past this so you would have to do one of two things you could shorten this up a little bit or you could shorten this up a little bit all right if you have the real estate um like if you have nothing else going on this 
and you just want to make sure that you bend a 10 degree bend, well, by all means, there you go. You know that it would be, this fish tape was going to go very, very nice right through here, okay? But you still have this problem. You still have 20 inches right here to get to there. So a 10 degree probably wouldn't work. So we'll put this one over here. Let's look at, this is a 60 degree bend. Now this would definitely work. Now this table is, I know you can't see it on here and you can see this thing's rising up, but I promise you, <laughs> promise you guys that this table goes like this. Oop, oop. I found it on the interstate. And if you're a lifelong Mountaineer Outdoor fan, you would know that I found this on the interstate. All right, so this would work, but here again, this is 60 degrees, all right? So you have to cut this part off, right? And you could have this much space. Do you see what I'm saying? You've got to decide how far you want it from your obstruction. You want this part of your band, no matter if it's this one or the Viking Hing Divine de Gurgen, you want your ultimate goal is to set this part of your bend or this part of your bend right here on your box. All right, that, that's how you want it to sit. Watch out for the garage door. Um, because you don't want it to, you don't want it to look like this because that makes no sense, right? Your ultimate goal is to get your front end down on the box and these two connect. This is how you really want it. A 30 degree bend is pretty much the standard on all of your bends, okay guys? See how, see the difference here what you have? You have it perfectly, so your 20 inches right here, you could cut this off and you're, you're setting beautiful. Your ultimate goal is to get about right here laying on top of your obstruction. Another important part of this is you gotta think about if you've got other pipes coming through here, if you have a sprinkler line coming through here, if you have uh, a four inch pipe coming through here, you need to look at your prints and you need to make sure that later on down the road, there's not gonna be a duck line or a sprinkler line because I will tell you, when I was in construction, they told me, and I'm sure it's still the same, that I have no priority over sprinkler lines or duck lines, sometimes even plumbing lines. But chances are those people will work with you. The sprinkler people, I have never had a good rapport with them. The sprinkler people always take precedence. They always say, I'm sorry, this is where we're going. Chances are every time you're gonna use a 30 degree bend just like this, it's gonna go perfectly right in or over the top or what have you. Let's take a look at this, all right, at 10 degrees. Let's look at the difference. Now we've already done this, but we're gonna do it again. So here's 10 degrees. Do you see how much? So if you had a pipe to run under here, when I mean, you got all this room to run a pipe under, okay? Sprinkler guy, plumber, whatever. All right, let's go to your 22, which is right here. Now, do you guys see how the spacing is different? I'm gonna bring the camera down here a little so it's on the same plane so you guys can see, but can you already see what's happening? I mean, you've already, let's put the 10 out here. You've already, I mean, the distance is crazy, the difference. So I'm bringing the camera down here and show you guys. No need to see my ugly face. So here's your 10 and there's your 22, okay? Now you guys see what I'm talking about. This is, we've already done this video, I know. It looks very similar, but I just want you to really visualize. If you had five or six pipes going through here on the 10, you're good. But now you limited yourself on this 22 and a half degree bend, guys. I hope you guys can visually see this. Here's a 30 degree bend, all right? I mean, let's look at the difference between the 33 and the 22 and show you guys. All right, they're lined up. Now you see, do you see the difference? This one here is the 30 degree, the one on the, towards you guys. So you really need to decide, you know, how much space you need, what the prints are calling for, what is in the way that you're gonna be running, okay? So you guys have options, but the thing that I want you to see with this video in particular is the real estate. This is important, guys. I mean, I know we talk a lot about uh, a lot of things on this channel. The main thing I want you to take away from this video is this, all right? You know, with these degree of bends that you have here, every time that you put a higher degree in, it shrinks the pipe and puts, and puts a lot more resistance for you to pull your wire through. So 
my opinion guys and it's just my opinion uh if you guys can stick with a 30 degree bin i think in the long run you'll be a lot better now there are times when you have to put a 45 or a 60 or a 10 now like i said before in many videos it's very seldom i've ever used a 60. i, I can't really even remember maybe a couple times in my whole entire career ever using a 60 degree bin because at that point i would put a fitting or a box you know come into a box and then go out or whatever you know uh but it's just very important that you guys visualize before you even put your first pipe down look up in the rafters or the ceiling or the bar joist or block wall and think what else is going to be in the way before i run these conduits all right you got to think about you know is there a ceiling grid you know do you want to be above that you know it's very it's just very important to visualize everything don't just say oh i can do that and just go on to it because i d used to do that i would be a bowl in china shop and i would just start running pipe and before i knew it you know i already blocked you know where they were going to cut into a block wall where a duck line would go through so you just got to be really cautious look at the prints look at all the prints don't just look at the electrical look at electrical look at you know the plumbers look at the uh hvac guys because all that is important look at the end game always keep a running total of your bins because like i said if you go here, here's some here's some important information if you go more than 360 degrees you're i doubt you're going to get a fish tape in it i mean you may i ain't gonna say you won't but you know my here's my opinion too this is a tip and then I'm going to end this video. So when you are bending your conduit, keep your degrees, right, in your mind. My personal opinion, when I always bend conduit, it's 270 degrees max. That's just me. Then a fitting. And you can go less. You can go 100, 100 degrees, put a fitting. It doesn't really matter. But 270 is my max. Now, I went further, obviously, in my career. Sometimes you have to. But for the most part, I, I try not to. How long is your fish tape? All right, that's the most important thing. How long is your fish tape? Because if you go 300 feet with one run of EMT, and I'm, I'm not talking about rigid, screw pipe. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about EMT. If you go more than your fish tape is, you just screwed yourself because most fish tapes I've ever seen, the longest one I've seen so far, and correct me if I'm wrong, drop a comment down if I'm wrong, the longest one I've seen is 240 feet. So if you go 300 feet and then you put your box, right, from box to box or whatever, from panel to box or whatever the case may be, trough, how are you going to get there? So you got to keep that in mind, all right? Don't go more than what your fish tape is. Now, I'm not saying that you have a 240 foot fish tape. So if you, uh, like you go out of your van, you look, you know, and you know that you have a 100 foot fish tape. Well, that's as far as you can go, unless you go buy another one. Okay, so keep that in mind. So those things you wanna keep in mind are what? The degrees, how much space that you have, you know, are you gonna be cutting somebody off? Do you need to use a 10 degree right here? Because you have to have somebody else going underneath you, all right? I mean, that, that's a possibility. And there's nothing wrong with that, all right? But for the most part, the magic, the magic degree is 30 degrees. That's, that's what all electricians pretty much strive for, I guess. I, I guess. But anyway, 30 degrees. And how long is your fish tape? Now, a screw pipe don't matter because you could suck a line in, a jet line, and then it doesn't matter. I still wouldn't go very far on screw pipe, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about EMT. I don't want to get off topic. It's like I always do. I hope this brought a little clarity to you. I hope I didn't confuse anybody. If I did, drop a comment down below and let me know. If this content has given you guys value, please make sure that you like and subscribe. And as a bonus, right, if you have, let's say, a pipe here like this, you're running and you want to know how to get over this now this kind of a box or obstruction would require a four-point saddle guys plain and simple now i have already done a four-point saddle video if you guys want to see how to get it done very effectively definitely check this video to the side 
and I will see you there. God bless. We'll see you on the next one. Have a great day.